Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV, and I wanna do a hot take on this recent news that Tesla is going to start production of their semi-truck, which for me comes to a surprise because one of the last things that, that Elon announced, I think on the last earnings call, was that they were pushing production of the semi-truck to 2021 due to battery cell constraints. And uh, all of a sudden, this, this leaked email that has hit mainstream media is saying that they're gonna be starting production. They don't say when, he doesn't say when. Uh, this is a part of my restraint and enthusiasm about this news. Uh, they don't say when they're gonna start production or where they're going to start production and when deliveries will be for their customers, just that they're going to start production. So to me, this tells me that maybe they've sorted out Number one, their battery cell constraints. And number two, they've decided where they're going to be producing this semi-truck. I think Nevada makes sense. There is room in the Gigafactory there to produce vehicles. Uh, could this also be produced in the uh, Austin area, the Texas Gigafactory? There's a lot that has yet to be scripted out from Tesla's end. And part of me wonders if they're waiting to make this, this uh, announcement about, about the batteries, about battery day, Tesla battery day, and where they're gonna make the Cybertruck before they talk about some of this, these next phases for production. So why is Tesla and Elon Musk doing an about face seemingly with their production intentions with this semi-truck? It is ironically on the heels of Nikola Motors IPO from last week and all of this news and chatter about the company. Their stock has been doing incredibly well since the IPO about a week ago and they've been in the news and a lot of people have been chatting about it. Even Tesla supporters have been providing their opinion about whether they like the company or don't like the company. Uh, for me, uh, maybe I'll do another video on this, but uh, there are a lot of challenges I see with Nikola and their products. I went to Nikola World, their, their annual conference that they put on last year, where they talked about their ambitions. And I think the biggest one that seems to be a barrier for them is creating this new hydrogen refueling infrastructure that doesn't exist right now. They're going, to, they're going to be building this on their own, similar to what Tesla did when they started their supercharger network back in 2012 or 2013. They had to build it from scratch. But the big difference between Tesla's supercharger network and Nikola's hydrogen network is that Tesla was able to leverage the existing electrical grid to build on top of that or leverage to build their supercharger network. With hydrogen, there's just not an infrastructure. There's not a grid for hydrogen. So they're gonna be not only producing their own hydrogen, but also building out the refueling stations across the US and across Europe. The other component to this that is really interesting that I think will be really important to key into if you're following Nikola is how are they going to produce the hydrogen in an environmentally friendly way? When I was at the conference a little over a year ago, they said that 40% of the hydrogen they produce will be produced from renewable energies. And so I can deduce that the other 60% is being produced by using electricity from the grid. So how can Nikola take this hydrogen, which is going to be energy intensive to produce, and create less of an environmental impact. As far as Tesla, I'm going to be really curious to know not only when they're gonna start producing this, where and when deliveries will be, I wanna know how Maxwell Technologies is going to be implemented into the semi-truck. Where the specs that Tesla introduced back in 2017 when they did this semi-truck launch, factoring in Maxwell's technology. My guess is no, because around that time, they were still assessing Maxwell's technology and trying to determine whether it was feasible or not. I'm filling in a lot of blanks here, but, but the, the, the timeline in which they were assessing Maxwell and the launch sort of coincide, but my guess is it was probably too soon to determine whether Maxwell was something that they were going to acquire or not. So is Maxwell technology going to be an add-on to the specs that they already announced? Will we see range improvements and will we see charging speed improvements? I'm really curious to know if Tesla can take their top end 500 mile range and maybe add another two or 300 miles of range on top of that, fitting into the same battery pack. Can they take some of the Raven technology that they've added to Model S and X and 
increase the range that way. Needless to say, there are a lot of questions as to how Tesla is going to crack this semi-truck nut. I wanna know more about Tesla's intentions here, and I've got a strange feeling that they're waiting to do this battery day before they announce any more details on the semi-truck. That's my hot take on this semi-truck news that just broke today. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. Are you super pumped about this new news or are you reserving some of that excitement for more details, hopefully soon to come? Sean Mitchell, All Things EV. I'll chat with everyone on the next video.